Gamer Subs is a sugar-free, great-tasting energy formula for gamers and workaholics alike. We here at the Toasty Bros love the energy it provides while tasting great. Want to give it a shot? Get a free trial by using the link down below and use code Toasty Bros on your next full order for 10% off. Hey, how's it going guys? Matt here from the Toasty Bros and sorry for the weird camera angle. This is going to be a vlog style video and what I'm going to be doing is doing some stuff to tweak my stream settings. So we do a weekly live stream on our YouTube channel. We do gaming live streams and we mainly play right now PUBG, Player Unknown's Battlegrounds. That's kind of been the game that we've been really getting into and what I want to do now is upgrade my streaming setup and here's how exactly when playing PUBG, this game is really unoptimized just keep that in mind i have a system with a gtx 1080 and a ryzen 7 1700 and i always experience a ton of frame drops well not with the live stream directly but the actual gameplay for me on my end when playing the game i have a 3440 by 1440 monitor if you haven't seen that review of it hit the i in the top right corner to check that video out but the main issue is i lose a lot of frames and i have to play the game at 1080p on a 1440p display well a 3440 by 1440p display and then i still have to deal with some frame issues because i get below 60 fps a lot of the time with the encoding on the cpu and the gpu being pushed to the max using this game now my main idea behind this whole video was to do something involving a two PC streaming setup, which in theory has been around for a long time. A lot of people get capture cards and then they add a capture card to a secondary PC, which takes the signal from the gaming PC encodes it separately from the main PC and then streams directly out of it. In theory, removing the streaming load on the main gaming PC so you get the full experience without any performance hit. And is an option that a lot of people use nowadays. Most professional streamers do this all the time. The cost is very expensive, and especially for us, with our streams not being the utmost priority on our channel, which we want to get that to be a higher priority, but regardless, we are not there yet. We can't justify the investment costs, especially on my end, because I'm the one who actually produces most of the live streams. So today, what I'm going to be doing is using a feature that is new to OBS called NDI. Now, NDI is basically in simple terms a way for your gaming pc to capture what's going on on your pc all your scenes everything within obs you can do your scene switching and all that sort of stuff none of that's going to be an issue at all but then instead of actually hitting that stream button what you're doing is going to be transcoding over your network that video and audio signal to another pc with obs and ndi on it now I'm going to demonstrate this in the video and we'll see how well it works, but I originally tested this with an old system that I have in mineral oil right behind me with an i3 2100 and 8 gigabytes of RAM. I thought this would be enough for the OBS, but even when I did the actual test originally, I was dropping frames over the network via just using a webcam on this OBS signal. It works, it passes over, but I wasn't even getting above 30 FPS and I saw that the i3 was already being pinged at like 100% usage so the i3 really isn't good enough for doing this so i had to transition into doing something a little bit more high end so what i did which i'm really blessed i didn't sell this system was use my i7 5820k pc that i used before i upgraded to ryzen now the i7 5820k is an older cpu slightly older but it still had six cores and 12 threads and i can overclock it to a decent frequency GPU doesn't matter, I'm probably just going to slap in my old Radeon 7770 just so I can get a video output, and then I have 16GB of DDR4 RAM. That's going to be plenty for just doing one task, decoding video and uploading it to a live stream. That's really all this thing has to do, and doing that will make this a lot easier on my main gaming PC load. Now really, I should be having these issues using a Ryzen 7 1700 with 8 cores and 16 threads. But the big thing is with Player Unknown's Battlegrounds. I know I'm doing a lot of work for a single game here, but this game is the one game that we really have been focused on and wanting to play a ton. So I really want to do this setup and it seems pretty straightforward. It only takes a couple of installs on the main PC, which I have set up already from behind the scenes. And then a couple of new installs on the streaming PC, which is the i7-5820K system. So what I'm going to be doing is installing Windows on that machine. We're going to wait for that to finish. And then I'm going to transition into doing some testing, playing Player Unknown's Battlegrounds, doing some live streams, capturing that footage, and basically show you all what the results were. So let's transition into a little bit of a time lapse where I go ahead and update Windows on that machine and get everything sorted. See you then. All 
Alright guys, so the PC is set up, we have Windows installed, and the PC is over here. So the main way I did this was I basically just ran a DVI cable to my monitor right here, which was originally for the Mineral Oil PC build, which really doesn't have much of a purpose anymore. I'll try to think of a purpose. If y'all have any ideas of something I can use this for, uh, comment down below. Originally it was going to be like a game server hoster, but I, I don't know anymore, man. I kind of just... It's just aesthetically there. I guess that's just what I'm going to call it. But, and as you can tell, I'm using the tower as a little bit of a mouse pad because I have very limited space in this room. So I'm kind of like taking advantage of everything that I got. And right now it's starting to look pretty good. This would actually work really well. And it should work for this NDI setup. So a couple things to note. When you're using NDI, the big thing is you have to make sure you're on the same physical network as the PC that you're sending the footage from. So I have both of my machines, the streaming PC and the main PC, connected to my Netgear router. And they are both physically on the same network, so everything should pass with flying colors. And as long as there's nothing wrong with this system, it shouldn't have any issues because I got it to work on the Mineral Oil PC connected in the same port. So we shouldn't have any issues there. I'm going to go ahead and install a bunch of drivers on this PC. And then once we are ready to go, I'll switch over to OBS and see if we can get a signal to come through and see what the performance is like. And I may do a test stream and see how it goes. All right, guys. So let me explain real quick exactly how this works. Now, this isn't the most professional way of doing it. Normally, I do like a screen capture, but it is a lot easier to do it this way. Now, once you install the NDI plugin, which I'm going to leave tutorials to do the actual install down below. If you're very interested in doing this, you'll have to do a couple of installs, but everything is really straightforward. You'll have access to this tools panel, which in the tools panel, if I can get my mouse over to it, you go up into tools, you'll get an NDI output output settings and inside there you'll get an option to enable NDI output on your network so what you do is hit enable name the output source and then that source is available on your network so then we transition over to the PC that we're using and as you can tell right here this isn't a separate monitor on my main PC. This is actually a separate output. This is a whole separate PC getting the signal and the latency is very, very low. Like I really don't notice that much of a latency, but it looks really good. I am still getting audio from the source right here. As you can tell, I'm probably going to plug in some headphones or some speakers to test it out and see if there's any like choppiness or anything with it. But it looks really cool because if I'm right here, I can do a scene switch. We'll test the latency by doing this. So if I do a scene switch real quick, if I hit the button right now, bam, if I hit the button again, it's really a really low latency transition and being able to do this is really awesome. And the cool thing is it really doesn't matter if it's delayed because it may add a little bit of interaction issues with your viewers, maybe add a little bit of delay with the live stream along with the latency from like Twitch or YouTube. But what it really does allow you to do is also pass the audio over. So you're not going to deal with like audio desync issues. Everything is going to line up perfectly because it's taking one signal, the audio and video, putting it together, transferring it over your network and showing it up on here so what I'm gonna do is go ahead and configure the settings on this PC to be able to do the live stream and then I'm gonna be doing a test live stream which I'm gonna include a link down below for you to check out but also a little snippet of it on this video as well so stay tuned for that and we're gonna go ahead and transition okay. and this guy is going in my building so I'm probably gonna die Where this go, huh? Come here, bitch boy. Come to daddy. I don't want this. Yeah, run. 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 Bob and weave, bro. Bob and weave. second floor in this building? Probably not. No. No. I'm gonna die because there's no loot in here. Did 
jump, jump. I'm dead. I'm gonna take shots. Oh, someone's been in here. <laughs> ah! No, I got no ammo. Don't do this to me, please. Ah! Give me something, something. We're gonna we're gonna machete this bitch. Oh, I found a backpack. That's something. So I kind of got caught up in a test stream and actually played a lot of PUBG. Uh, it was kind of intense and I died at the very end. But the video quality itself, for my opinion, looks really, really good. And the performance on my main PC is as if I'm not even streaming. I did not experience any issues with my internet connection being super slow or anything else being bogged down. My main gaming PC basically performed as if I was doing nothing to it besides gaming. And that's the big point here, guys. The main point for doing this is to allow my gaming PC to stretch its legs and focus entirely on gaming. And while we have this setup behind me, which is basically just going to be streaming at 1080p, 60 FPS, with even an 8,000 bit rate, and cause no performance hitches to this main PC, no drop frames, no issues on that part, I'm very excited. I'm even going to be experimenting with it even more by trying to fix the encoding settings a little bit. I'm on the very fast CPU preset, but I may slow it down a little bit and see if I can get a better visual quality, because again, I have a CPU over there, the i7-5820K, and it has a lot of room still to go. It's only at roughly 30% usage on a 1080p 60fps stream at 8000 bitrate to YouTube, which is ridiculous, and the quality looks pretty good. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, leave a like down below and comment what you think. As I mentioned, if you want to do something like this yourself, I will leave links down below to tutorials that I use for this process. There are a lot of videos out there and I really didn't see making another tutorial video to be that. There are a lot of videos already out there and I really did not see making another tutorial video on this subject to be that important because there are a lot of people out there who explain it a lot better than I possibly could and it is a very simple process as you can tell through this video it really wasn't that long it was mainly just concepts and giving you all explanations on how I'm going to set things up and be sure if you want to check out our live streams to hit the notification bell down below because doing so will allow you to get notifications when we go live and also subscribe to the Talent C YouTube channel because every Friday at 9 p.m. Eastern time me Jackson and Zach host a night owl community live stream where we promote talency partners and also hang out and play PUBG and whatever other games we decide to transition into. Thanks again guys and peace out.